In Legacy of the Void, with the addition of Archon Mode, Blizzard added steel commands for unit management. Previously, there were only create control group and add to control group commands. So if you wanted to create a new group and remove those units from existing groups, you had to manually remove them from the existing group with control shift click and then control bind or shift bind to create the new group. With the steel commands, they've reduced this to a single process where you simply add them to a new group or create a new group and it pulls them out in the same step. I'll show you where that is. You go options, hotkeys, global, unit management, wait is that, that's incorrect, rep, <laughs> control groups, there we go, global control groups. So notice here I have my create commands totally unbound. The steel versions are just generally better. There are very few scenarios where you would want to keep a unit in multiple control groups while adding them to a new one. I have select control group, this remains the same, just pushing the button to get those units, but then the steel versions. So add to control group and take away units. Create control group and take away units. These features make your army movements a lot more dynamic and you can get away from that one-dimensional process of having a main army moving it forwards and backwards and being limited to that main attack lane. With Ling Bane Wars, a lot of times it will sort of regress to that sort of battle where both players are streaming Ling Bane toward each other and trying to take the best traits they possibly can, but not really dividing their forces and giving the opponent a really bad time in multiple locations. So this match that I played was a really good example of one player having more than one dimension of army and attacking them with not just one group of Ling Bane, but having Lings and Bane separate, and then also having counter-attacking groups. The opening build order here isn't really of much consequence. I went pool first and tried to build a secret spine. Didn't finish. Not really the point of this analysis. Making a third queen is pretty nice for early defense. It also gives you a little bit of wiggle room in terms of losing a queen at some point. You can still inject your bases. So my hotkey setup is I have my hatches on one key, I have a creep queen on one key, and then here I did the first split of my units. These links are already across the map. They're a functional squad of fighting units. They can scout, they could potentially attack something. At home, I'm making more links, four larva worth of links, but they're so far away from the other units that they might as well be their own group of units. So this is my main army hotkey with these units that are being built. These links are in a counter-attacking group, and then I have yet another group that I'm going to use for Ling Bane later on. For anyone who doesn't already, I would highly recommend hotkeying your Bane separate from your links in Ling Bane Wars. It just improves your ability to make sure you take the best possible trades with your units. So I broke off another group of units. I'll go through my vision so you can kind of see that process and how the forces are divided. The opponent is just attacking forward with all their stuff, whereas I have some queens and banes at home to defend, and then any time they defend, I can fall back and create a counter-attacking group by stealing units to a separate harassment group. This is sort of the linear Ling Bane exchange. And then whenever the opponent defends, if you have a bunch of Lings, Lings are pretty bad at defending a frontal Ling Bane attack because very few Banes can push all these units away. So what you can do instead is put them kind of off to the side of the main attack lane. This is the main attack lane, where they just rush from one person's natural to the other person's natural. These are the sort of side lanes on the map, this lower side lane and this upper side lane. What you can do is say, take this group of units, put them in a side lane, and then once you see with an overlord that they've crossed the map, you can run them into the opponent's base. And often, they won't have enough defense or enough attention to deal with both attacking into you and defending your backstab. Go to my vision again. 
my banelings are always on a separate hotkey. Often I'll keep two to four banes at home that are not on a hotkey, they're just kind of resting safety banes. In case the opponent does shove a bunch of lings into a base, I'll be pretty safe against that. One of the most crucial micro maneuvers for a Zerg player to learn that pays off in Ling Bane is being able to box select two units at a time. So two Lings being boxed to attack a main, it'll kill it in a reasonable amount of time and it'll take a really good trade. Also boxing two of your banes into the opponent's banes is really crucial. As a general rule, attacking is easier to do mechanically than defending. With counterattacking, you can defend by attacking from an unexpected angle. So, see these lings at the bottom side of the map? They're in the side lane, and whenever the opponent crosses mid-map, I'm just going to send a few lings up and check and see what their defenses look like. So these lings acted as a scouting group to see is there a spine here, is there a queen, are there any banes? If there are no banes, then you can attack with the rest of it. So it's a less risky way of attacking with many lings while the opponent is away from home. And notice this is divided between multiple control groups. So this is my main army key, this is that side lane group of lings, and this is another group of lings that are going to break these rocks and then go into the opponent's main. So rather than be one dimension of pushing back and forth on the lane, you can be two dimensions of having one backstab group, or you can be three to four, however many dimensions of having your links separated up. Links definitely get diminishing returns when they're balled up in a big group, especially when there are 11 banes from the opponent. Right there you can kind of see the downside of walking banes across the map. They can't very easily go back home and defend because they're so slow. Usually it's best to just commit and try and go for an attack with them, but morphing the banes on the opponent's side of the map is generally what you want to do, because the lings are so fast, getting near the objective, the banes can morph and then you can attack, and you want to have two to four safety banes at home, so maybe two here, and two here, and one here if you want to be super safe. But the steel function is something I highly recommend. There's virtually no downside to replacing all of your add and create hotkeys with the steel versions, and it makes your ZBZ way better. You can do the same